The man and a saber-toothed tiger were trapped in the trap at the same time, and the saber-toothed tiger was stuck in the wood and could not move. The man wanted to kill the saber-toothed tiger while it was grimacing, but the man's heart was softened by the sight of the tiger's desperate struggle. He moved away the heavy wood and rescued the saber-toothed tiger. The safe saber-toothed tiger walked straight towards him, but it just sniffed at the man and remembered his scent. Men have since fought their way into their own world as a result. His name is Dare and is a Yagal, who lived 10,000 years ago in prehistory, and his tribe hunted huge mammoths for a living. When Dare was a young boy, the tribe's shaman prophesied that this year would be their last mammoth hunt. For this year, the mammoth's leader would be killed by them, and the one who killed the mammoth's leader would lead the tribe into the light. They drove the mammoths to a narrow intersection that had been prepared ahead, and with a large net, they trapped one of the strongest mammoths, not realizing that this was the leader of the mammoths, who was far more powerful than the Yagal tribe could have imagined. Mammoth broke free easily. The Yagal tried to pull the fleeing mammoth with their manpower, but their strength was simply too small in front of the mammoth. Everyone chose to let go at this point. Kadara's hand was entangled in the rope and could not get out, so he was dragged by the mammoth all the way to the top of the mountain, and finally the rope net hit a rock and broke. The mammoth turned back toward Deer, but he managed to dodge it. Deer hurriedly picked up the spear and threw it, but the mammoth's skin was so thick that the spear didn't do much damage to it. Deer picked up another spear to defend himself, but in his panic, he got it stuck in a crack in the stone. When the mammoth attacked Deer again, it actually slammed into the spearhead by itself, and Deer killed the mammoth leader by mistake, and he was awarded the highest honor of the Yakal tribe, and also married Evelyn, the most beautiful woman in the tribe. But the good life is always so short. This day, a group of marauders rode to the tribe. They had advanced weapons and armor, and burned and plundered Deer's tribe. But they only robbed and did not kill. They took all the young strong men and beautiful women of the tribe. Dare's recently married wife. Evelyn was not immune to this. He wanted to rush out to save his wife. But the other side was outnumbered and well equipped. The marauders would take their captives to a place full of slaves, which was called the Mountain of the Gods. There were many tribes of people gathered here, and there were countless mammoths, but all of them were working slaves, and it was here that the pyramids were built. Their leader claimed to be an all-powerful god, and whenever he arrived, all the slaves had to crawl on their knees and worship. On Dare's side, he led the rest of his clan to prepare to rescue the captured, while his wife, Evelyn, left markers for them along the way. Dare led his clan over countless snow-covered mountains, finally following the markers to the end of the snow-covered mountains, and immediately afterward into a tropical rainforest. The marauder's group was just ahead of them, and was attacked by unknown beasts. Deer's side also heard the beast cry and found a bloody marauder's mask. Soon they found the marauder who was recuperating, and Zhang Lao stated that the marauder had just been attacked and would be more guarded at this time. There was no other way. Deer could only observe their movements from the side, only to see a brawny bald man walking towards Evelyn. Looking at his lewd appearance, he should be trying to plot against her. At the critical moment, Deer appeared in time, knocked out the man, and took the opportunity to save Evelyn. By the time they were ready to rescue the rest of the clan, the marauders had already arrived with their men, and all they could do was desperately flee through the rainforest. Suddenly the cry of an unknown beast was heard. By now the marauders had caught up with them, but the beast attacked them first. Immediately after Deer they were also attacked. It turned out to be a kind of giant vulture, and the two vultures kept running after Deer, so they had no choice but to burrow inside a tree hole. But the vultures were in hot pursuit, and in order to protect his wife Evelyn, Deer decided to go out and distract the vultures. He threw rocks at the vultures that were attacking the tree hole and soon attracted two of them. He quickly ran to the top of a rocky hill and killed one of them with a rock. But the other one was more aggressive. Luckily, it was a dense bamboo forest that limited the vulture's movement. But this vulture seemed to have eaten his heart out. And the forest was going to make Deer his lunch for the day. Luckily, it was Deer who took the food on the spot and killed him outright with the bamboo that the vultures had been off. But by the time Deer rushed back, his companions and Evelyn had already been captured by the marauders. So he dragged the injured elder to continue his journey. At night, he wanted to hunt for food, but he didn't realize that he accidentally fell into a trap and fainted. When he woke up again, he found a saber-toothed tiger trap next to him. Luckily, the saber-toothed tiger was stuck by the wood. Deer wanted to take the opportunity to kill him, but Deer finally had a soft heart. He moved the wood to release the saber-toothed tiger, and the saber-toothed tiger didn't attack him. It just sniffed the odor of his body, and then jumped out of the trap and left. Deer himself rushed to climb out, however by the next day, when they came to a tribe looking for food, they were suddenly surrounded by the local tribes then. Just then, there was a sudden roar of a tiger, and it turned out to be the same, saber-toothed tiger, that Deer had saved in the trap last night. The crowd backed away in fear. As the saying goes, everything has a spirit, and the saber-toothed tiger slowly approached Deer. Deer also recognized, 
that he was the saber-toothed tiger that he had saved last night, although his heart was afraid, but at this time, he did not dare to act rashly. Luckily, the saber-toothed tiger just sniffed the odor of his body, and then jumped behind him and roared a few times at the tribal people, as if telling the tribal people, this man is under my cover, if you want to move him, you should move me first. It turned out that this saber-toothed tiger was here to repay the favor to Dare. After determining that the tribal people did not dare to move Dare, the saber-toothed tiger roared a few times and left. At this time, the tribal people also have put down their weapons, but also with their specialty millet pepper hospitality dare. The duo then took him back to the ancient ruins, and it turned out that their tribe had always had this prophecy, that in the future a man would appear who could talk to saber-toothed tigers, and he would lead the tribes to break the rule of the gods. As rumors spread that Dare was the son of the prophecy, the tribes all caught wind of it, and they gathered into an army, ready to take back their people under the leadership of the son of the prophecy. By that time they caught up with the marauders. The marauders had already left with their clan on a boat, and without a boat to cross the waterway, they had to make their way to the mountain of gods on foot but they got lost in the desert. During the night, Dare confirmed the direction of advancement through the North Star, so he led the people to travel through the night. With the spirit of never getting up, they finally reached the so-called Mountain of Gods, where there were several pyramids under construction and countless slaves captured by marauders. They built the pyramids for the marauders like cattle, and all these slaves were clansmen of various tribes. The leader of the marauders was known as the Almighty God, and in order to speed up the construction of the pyramid, he would also throw some of the slaves off the heights from time to time, thus deterring the rest of the slaves to labor even harder. Fear arose in Deer's heart as the marauders outnumbered them several times over. He felt that he was not capable of defeating the marauders at all. But the elders told him that although the marauders outnumbered them, the number of people taken to labor was even greater. So at night time, Deer sneaked into the cell where the slaves were being held, ready to convince the captured slaves to unite against the rule of the gods. However, a long history of slave mentality had deprived these people of the will to resist. The shaman of one of the tribes stated that only those with the symbols of the Big Dipper on their bodies had the ability to win the rule of the gods. There was no so-called Big Dipper symbol on Deer, so they did not believe that Deer was able to defeat the gods. So they immediately said that they would not resist the gods. Deer could only return to his party quite helplessly. However, on the way back he was followed by the marauders, and although the elder killed them all, the elder did not survive. At this point, Darite was both heartbroken and angry, so he decided to fight the marauders to the death and launched an impassioned speech in front of the clans. On the other side, there was a marauder who was ready to do something untoward to Evelyn, but luckily it was stopped by the god's cronies, but inadvertently noticed the symbol of the Big Dipper on Evelyn's hand. They assumed that Evelyn was the one who ended the gods, and by now, Deer and the others had dressed up as slaves, and their plan was to find the mammoth leader first, then untie the ropes binding him, and purposely provoke the mammoth leader, then blow the horn to inform the others that they were driving the mammoths all the way back, so that the mammoths would turn around and attack the marauder's soldiers. The slaves who refused to resist before saw this and joined the fight. At this time, the entire pyramid began to be chaotic, and they quickly destroyed the pyramid's buildings. At this time, all the slaves all stood up and rushed to ring the gods' pyramid, but the marauders tied Evelyn in front of them, and Deir saw this and hurriedly ordered the attack to stop. However, at this time the marauders blew to the horn. The slaves heard the horn, all consciously began to kneel. The so-called god, on the other hand, said that they would release Evelyn if Dare would give up his resistance. Dare agreed without hesitation, and then he proceeded to ask the god what would happen to the other slaves. Instead, the god said that they would be slaves for all eternity. Here to help him build the pyramid, Dare was instantly enraged. No. They will not. He thought the god was a king, but he was a bronze. The so-called god was nothing more than a man with a more advanced IQ, pretending to be one. He is not a god! At this point all the slaves revolted and looked to be on the verge of being reunited with Evelyn. One of the marauders, however, shot Evelyn with an arrow and Dare, grief-stricken, angrily stepped forward and killed the marauder. By this time, the slaves had completely taken over the palace of the gods. And with that, Aveling was gone. But it didn't end there. On Dari's side of the tribe, the sorcerer used his last spell to trade his life for Aveling's. Aveling also miraculously came back to life. And the story ends here. Lei used her wisdom and bravery to free thousands of slaves. There is no such thing as a god who saves all beings. There are only mortals who step up to the plate. If there really is an almighty god, it is the self in impermanence. Don't forget to like and add your attention if you like. We'll see you in the next issue.